fit-for-purpose stablecoin legislation must protect American citizens' financial rights to privacy. In democratic societies, lawful transactions in digital money, whether it's sovereign digital money or non-sovereign, must be immune from political surveillance and censorship, regardless of who's in power today, four years from now, 10 years from now, 20 years from now. All right, welcome back. This is Consensus. This is day two. We are in Austin, Texas, and that was Crypto Dad, former CFTC chair Chris Giancarlo. I was sitting there right in the first row. He was speaking at Consensus yesterday. He only gave a speech. He didn't allow any one of us to actually interact with him and ask him the tough questions. He answered them on his own. His point was that as crypto firms argue, US regulators have been too vague heading into this year's crackdown. Well, they need, to, they need to do something different and they need to accept, the government needs to accept that CBDCs are coming. Joining us now to discuss the future of crypto regulation is Solidus Labs Vice President of Regulatory Affairs, Kathy Kraninger, and Polygon Labs Chief Policy Officer, Rebecca Rettig. Great to have you both. Thanks for having us. Absolutely. All right, so you guys heard what Mr. Giancarlo said. Uh, I think the best point that he made was it is possible to be able to come up with rules to regulate this industry because in 2017, when he was the chairman at the CFTC, he demonstrated how to do it. He came up with the legislation and he also said that that's the only one till date that actually is a regulation. Uh, what's your take on that, Cathy? Let's start with you. Well, I was a regulator with Chris, so uh, obviously you'll find a lot of agreement with us and probably Rebecca, but. But I think one of the challenges we have right now is that there is not much of an incentive for regulators to actually take a risk. And engaging with a new industry is actually taking a risk. Making a proactive decision and determination is taking a risk. What's the risk? It, it, that something will fail on their watch, that they will get blamed for it. So all of those dimensions are definitely part of the structure today, which is unfortunate. I mean, I, I think it is. How do we incentivize them? You said there's no incentive for them. Should the incentive be that it's their job? I, I kind of agree with you, but I think it's, it's Congress acting too. Certainly that policy direction is there because fundamentally the regulators are carrying out and enforcing the law as it exists. So there is flexibility for them, you know, as Chris took it and I took it in setting up sandboxes and having technology, you know, innovation policies but fundamentally it gets back to you know, a new framework in law. Yeah, and I think that's an important distinction to make. You've spoken a lot this morning about what are the regulators doing, but I do think that talking about what policymakers are doing is really, really important. Just this morning, a new bill was proposed by two senators and two congressmen, bipartisan, um, the Financial Technology Protection Act, which is meant to create working groups between uh, policymakers, regulators, and the industry to study different ways that crypto is being used, including for illicit finance and things like that, to come up with new legislation in order to be able to think about how to regulate this industry and how to write new laws, as Kathy, Kathy was talking about, that will give regulators the authority to carry out the laws as they relate to a totally new technology and new industry. Uh, I, I just want to, you, you, given you talked about working groups, yesterday you were both part of well, working groups. Right here at Consensus, we have something very cool happening. We have a Consensus at Consensus report that's going to be coming up. It's, it's going to bring together in very private, invite-only uh, events, uh, discussions about some of the most important questions we need answered for this industry to progress, uh, or just to find itself, you know, its way forward. What were you both doing? Like, you were in different workshops. What questions were you answering? Why don't you go first? Uh, ours was focused very much on two different parts of it, both policy and regulation. So everything that everybody in the industry is really focused on today, because I do believe that uh, industry and policymakers who care about setting up new laws and creating a market infrastructure for this uh, industry are really focused on how to move it forward. So I think that lawyers and uh, uh, people working on policy in the industry, we're talking about how to make sure we're engaging appropriately both on the congressional side and with regulators and really how to bridge the large divide, especially that's arisen after the end of 22 and a number of the um, seismic events that happened in the industry then, but how do we bring people back together and back to the table to be able to have a discussion that sort of takes the heat down a little bit on both sides? What's the answer? 
<laughs> uh, I guess taking some of the heat down. Um, I think having people like Kathy and myself and a lot of others in the industry who are willing to sit down, especially on the side with policymakers, and talk about what makes sense, understanding the technology and the law and how that applies and where it intersects appropriately. What do you think of uh, Mika that's coming out of the European Union? No, yeah, I, I think it's exactly what we want to see in the United States in terms of the process. So it really is about having policymakers come together and write a new framework. And it's not perfect, but you see amongst the industry how much we have embraced Mika. It's because internationally these things are happening. They're happening in the United Arab Emirates. They're happening in Singapore and Hong Kong. It's happening in the UK in a very big way too with great uh, focus from political leadership that is innovative and technology forward. And so looking at the opportunities of this technology, you know, I, I certainly listened earlier to, to Anthony and, and I would agree with him at least on the concern that we as Americans want to see America lead. Yeah, yeah. We want to okay. be part of that next well, internet. But when are you going to see America lead realistically? You guys <laughs> talk to both the industry, your, your history is with government. You can, okay, they can predict what's going to happen because they are authorities on this. So I thought we had a crystal ball. Yeah, well, we, we can't actually. So just tell me very clearly, with the election coming around the corner with uh, somebody called Donald Trump and Joe Biden probably going to hash it out, when do we get the first regulation either on stable coins, on crypto, on Web3, on DeFi? Whatever, like when do we realistically get it? What's your prediction? Sure. I, I don't, we certainly don't have a crystal ball, but I think what we can do is really support the policymakers who are engaging really meaningfully in writing this legislation. Okay, let me rephrase that. Okay. Is it coming in the next two years? Uh, <laughs> Kathy. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say, I spent half my career in the Hill and definitely understand how the process works. Look, if we as an industry can't say the answer is yes to that question, then we shouldn't even be engaging to begin with. Ooh, so, good answer. I, I, yes, that's, that's what I will say. And there are people who are really spending a lot of time and energy trying to understand it and build the right answer and move forward in a bipartisan way, as Rebecca said, and that's, that's key. All right, okay, we're completely out of time. I would have loved to talk more. We really do appreciate both of you coming on, talking regulation, giving us this, this, uh, an answer to this very difficult question. We appreciate that. Uh, thank you for being here. That's Kathy and Rebecca, very much appreciated.